I want to begin my last video on Master Harold and the Boys on page 40. I'm hoping you're going to take out the book and follow along with me and look at some of the specific things that I'm going to part put out. Um, they're having a discussion about ballroom dancing, and um, Sam asked Hallie the very philosophical question, what is art? That's actually a question that philosophers have been asking for a long time, and the definition of that is complex. But three important philosophical questions all come up on page 40. What is art? Halley sort of haphazardly, haphazardly says, what is life? And um, more importantly, um, it, Sam seems to know that what is art has something to do with what is beautiful. Plato talked a lot about the good, the true, and the beautiful, and in a very simplistic way, he sort of determined that those three things are the same thing. But they really are exploring these philosophical ideas, and they're also, Sam's pointing out that um, the, the, this thing, this, this ballroom dance, is really something magnificent, and it seems like it is beyond Halley's imagination. And, and, and Sam's really trying to share it with Halley in a way that he can, so that Halley can really imagine it and also pay it the respect that it is due as a work of cultural significance and a work of art um, and a thing of beauty. In, in a very philosophical terms, that's what all of this is. On page 41, Sam says, your imagination hasn't helped you at all. There's a lot more to it than that. He means the dance. We're getting ready for the championships. And what he does is he builds up for Haley and Haley's mind what exactly is going to happen during this, this dance. This, this part of the play is probably the hardest part for an actor to do really well because he has to paint he has to become sort of a storyteller not just for Halley but for the audience and he has to really paint this visual of what these dances are really like um Halley on page 42 starts getting interested and he says there's a line where he says mysteriously I've got my reasons and a few lines down he says um which may which I suppose makes it even more significant event. When they repeat that phrase, a significant event, and then Halley's on the bottom of page 42 thinks and he goes, I wonder if I could get away with it. I don't think I got it the first time I read this play, but the inherent racism that Halley has makes him question whether or not this event that he's about to uh, hear about is worthy of being called a cultural event. It's only his racist mind that sort of puts him in that place. Um, notice how racist he sounds on page 43. He talks about his teacher, uh, old Doc Bromley. He's my English teacher. He's going to argue with me, of course. He doesn't like the natives. That's how hell he refers to all black people. But I'll point out to him that in a strict anthropological terms, the culture of a primitive black society includes its dancing and singing. Primitive black society? How horrific. That really is sort of like racist and it's insulting language. And yet I notice that Willie and Sam are so used to it that they don't even react to it. They're actually getting excited because Hallie's getting excited about this thing that they are both into and that they both love. Um, so you have him sort of doing this on the next few pages where Sam is describing this event for Hallie. And um, there's a kind of enthusiasm. And one of the things that I want you to notice at the bottom of page 44 is that Willie um, describes himself getting ready for the dance. And he's like posing and he says, I'm relaxed and ready to romance. Um, the word romance is really important in this play because ballroom dancing is really or romantic. 
But it is also, and I think even Willie means it this way, it is also romantic in the old sense of that word, like romantic poetry. It is, um, you know, romantic poetry or things or, 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 or romance literature, not, not like romance novels, but novels from the romantic period, they don't paint life the way it is. They paint it the way it ought to be. And the dance floor is sort of that way too. It's full of glamour. It's full of, and so this is a world where, and because we have this sort of perfect world, and not to be too simple here, but I think what a lot of people would call the dance floor is a kind of microcosm, not for the way the world is, but for the way the, we would like for the world to be. So Hallie's getting all this information from them about the dance, and he's trying to find out like facts and details. And he asks a question on page 45 about the penalties. And he, 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 he brings up this idea. Let's say you're dancing and you run into somebody else. What would they do? How do, do they penalize you somehow? And Sam is the one that starts laughing about it. And then he turns to Will and he says, hey, if me and Miriam bump into you and Hilda, and Willie just starts laughing too. Both men find the idea of bumping into somebody else hysterical because it just doesn't happen. It can't happen. The dance floor, which is symbolic and a microcosm, is a world without collisions. Um, Sam says it at the bottom of page 45. It's probably one of his more important lines. There's no collisions out there, Hallie. Nobody trips or stumbles or bumps into anybody else. It just doesn't happen. That's what that moment is all about. To be one of those finalists on that dance floor is like, it's like being in a dream about a world in which accidents don't happen. What could be more romantic than that? That's the romantic period in literature. That's that, that's that idealism that doesn't exist in the real world. Now the play is shockingly and starkly realistic because it does deal with the real world, but at least it has this symbol for a better place or at least a better world. Um, sorry. Yes, I'm on page 46 and I noticed that Sam, to sort of make that point, he says, of course it is. Um, that's what I've been trying to say to you all afternoon, and it, the dance floor, it's beautiful because that is what we want life to be like. But instead, like you said, Hallie, we're always bumping into each other all the time. Even for the characters on the stage, the dance floor becomes a metaphor for a better world, a world where people get along. And... Hallie, for a moment, sort of latches onto this idea, and he wants that to be what his paper is about. Um, Sam says, uh, Hallie says this, but is that the best we can do, Sam? Watch six finalists dreaming about the way it should be. Sam says, I don't know. But it starts with that. Without the dream, we won't know what we're going for. And anyway, I reckon there are a few people who've got past just dreaming about it and are trying for something real. Remember that thing we read once in the paper about the Mahatma Gandhi? And I'm just going to say what other English teachers would always say. Um, he's mentioning these great charismatic leaders who make their, that world a better place. And this play... Master Held in the Boy seems to have a calling for that great leader to arise. And if that's going to happen for these people, then essentially this play sort of like foreshadows Nelson Mandela. It's, un, it's, a, it's undeniable. Um, Halley said to, to Mahatma Gandhi, Halley says, you're right. He certainly was trying to teach people to get the steps right. And Sam gives another example. He says, and the Pope. Yes, he's another one. Um, and then, um, well, um, we're going on, and Halley names his paper A World Without Collisions. 
he call, and then he subtitles it Global Politics on the Dance Floor. And that becomes his, um, that becomes his new vision. The next thing that happens is um, we get a phone call from Hallie's mom. And um, Hallie asks if it's coming from a public telephone. That means like a pay phone. And it's not, which means that she's home. Um, that's why he's asking about whether or not it's a public telephone. Pages 48 and 49 are one long dramatic monologue. Now, of course, it sounds like a dialogue because he's talking to somebody on the phone, but, you know, it's one actor, one device on the stage, and that's what he's doing. Um, the, um, the, Hallie's really distraught that his father is coming home. And he says, um, and a couple of things that I want you to notice about this monologue it reveals a lot about Hallie's character. And one of the things that it, re it reveals is that he's afraid of his father, that he kind of hates his father. But the other thing that he does, which makes me really sad, is how much he uses just absolute guilt and manipulation on his mother. He doesn't say anything to make her feel better. He doesn't say anything like, can I help you? What can I do? Um, what can I, you know, he just says, you know, he tells her that it's going to be her fault if he flunks out of school and that he's tired of entering stinking chamber pots full of phlegm and piss and that he's didn't get this textbook he wanted because his dad stole his book money for booze. And he says all of these things. And of course, you can tell that the mother has started crying on the other end of the phone, but he can't. Um, and the next thing that happens is the father gets put on the phone. Well, if Haley were a man, if he had any kind of dignity about himself, the very next thing that he would do is he'd tell his father exactly how he feels. He'd curse his father out. He'd say, no more drinking. Just quit doing this. Quit, quit treating my mom and me this way. You have to go back to the hospital. Something. But Hallie's not going to man up. He his dad gets on the phone and he's like, okay, chum, um, I got a nice pile of comic books for you. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, he's just sort of super kind to him. Um, but you can tell, you know, he has no, he, he's just not man enough to stand up to his father. That's why the play ends the way it does. When he fails to stand up to his father, he has to turn and take out all that anger and aggression on someone else. And that's really why he explodes the way he does on Willie. Um, uh, Hallie, you know, Sam actually is trying to comfort Willie, or Sam is trying to comfort Hallie right after the phone call. And Hallie is kind of just snapping at him. Um, they... Um, What happens next is um, Hallie is going to go on and on about how life is just a fucked up mess. He says it just like that. Um, he talks about how bloody useless the world is, and it, you have to get the you have to get the irony here um, because Hallie, um, you know, the person, the people for whom this world really isn't fair are Willie and Sam. Hallie, the whole play, really, unless it's on the last two pages, the whole play, Hallie is absolutely oblivious. He feels like he's the victim of everything and that life is totally unfair and he's the only person in the world who suffers. But he rants and raves and moans about how unfair the world is. And eventually, Sam, and he also is saying things about his father that are probably true, but also really cruel. We do know from near the end of the play that um, Hallie does love his father. Of course he does, but his father is a weak, flawed man. He's an alcoholic and he's crippled and he's, he's just not going to be anything that's, he just can't be a good father. 
Um, you know, on page 51, he uses that metaphor. He talks about cripples on the dance floor. And sorry, I've got a cat who's going to start typing. So Hallie is talking about cripples on the dance floor and how unfair the world is. Um, and he says this line at the bottom of 51 about how cripples are out, always out there tripping everybody up and trying to get, uh, to, well, whatever. Um, Sam tells him to stop um, on page 52. He says, stop now. And he actually, there's an exclamation point. The stage directions say, almost shouting. Sam says, stop now. Hallie, it's your father you're talking about, Hallie. So, do you know what you've been saying? No, Hallie, you mustn't do it. Take back those words uh, and ask for forgiveness. And then at the end of this play, I really do think forgiveness is probably the most important theme. Can Sam forgive Hallie? Can Hallie forgive his father? I don't have a lot of hope for Hallie, but other people see, read this play very differently than I do. And of course, Hallie is a toll fugard, and you should have hope for a toll fugard. He turned out okay. He learned his lessons. Um, even Willie says, when, when they're talking about forgiveness, and I'm on page 52, yes, Master Haley, it's true what Sam says. Hallie, a little further down. Um, well, Hallie's talking about how life's unfair and how Willie and Sam would have no way of knowing how really unfair the world is and life is. The irony there is just too thick to bear. Um, so Hallie starts to snap and he starts scolding Sam and Willie and he starts telling them to mind their own business, even though he's been telling them his problems the whole play. And he says to Sam on page 53, you're only a servant here, and don't forget it. And then he says something about his father being Sam's boss, and Sam says, no, your mother's my boss. And Hallie says, he's a white man, and that's good enough for you. What a horrific thing to say. Even Sam is a little taken aback, and he says, I'll try to forget that you said that. Hallie just keeps digging in. Don't, because you won't be doing me a favor if you do. I'm telling you to remember it. He said this horribly racist thing to Sam, and he's like, and you should remember it. On page 54, Sam says, we are on dangerous ground, and if we're not careful, somebody's going to get hurt. And I can tell that Sam really means Hallie. But Hallie says, it won't be me. Sam, don't be so sure. That's irony. So, um, on page 54 and 55, those pages are really important because that's where the title of the play is going to come from. Hallie decides that Sam should call him Master Harold, like Willie does. Now, Master, of course, means a little boy. Uh, it's, it's weird to me that he means that, because he means call me Master like I'm above you, like I'm your master, as in a slave-master relationship. Usually, Master means a boy who's uh, less than 11 years old. And actually, it is a bit of a pun because both of those things apply. He's got culture, or his society does put Hallie above Sam in that way. But Hallie is also incredibly immature here, like a 10 year old, and maybe he should be called this. Willie kind of warns him, if you make me call you that, I'll call you that from now on. Um, you know, Hallie threatens his job and and whatnot. But what Sam says, if you make me say it once, I'll never call you anything else again. 
it's a threat. It means, I think, if you make me say that, I won't care about you enough to do anything any different. On page 55, Hallie is quoting his father, and at the bottom of the first, you know, uh, line, he says, quoting his father, you must teach the boys to show you some more respect, my son. This lets me know where Hallie gets his racist ideas and the idea of te calling Sam and Willie, who are both grown-up adult men, the boys. That's also part of the title, Master Harold and the boys. But I, I notice that the title does refer to him as Master ha Harold. Hallie tells this horrifically racist joke, and he tells it just to hurt Sam. The joke itself is a stupid pun, but it plays off of the word fair, which could mean light-skinned, but it could also mean just and decent. The truth is, Hallie, who has light skin, is not being just or decent, and Sam is smart enough to get it. He tries to give Hallie an out. You know, you laugh at this racist joke. Do you do it because you want to make your father feel better? And Hallie's like, no. I do it because I think it's funny. See, unlike the conversation he had with his father, Hallie feels like there's no repercussions for saying these things to Sam. But really what Hallie's doing is he's attacking the one person who really does care about him. On page 56, you get what I would call the climax of the play. You know, the joke was about Sam's ass. And on page 56, Sam says, oh, you think it's funny? And Sam shows him his ass. Um, he bears it. The audience can see it. It's a black man's backside. Hallie doesn't know where to go from there. So he spits in Willie's so he spits in Sam's face. That's about, I mean, I, you have to think about what motivates somebody to do something like that. It's anger, it's rage. He's also very shamed. I think he's very ashamed of the fact that he didn't stand up to his father when he had him on the phone. Sam says it. To, to, to Hallie, you've hurt yourself, Master Harold. And notice that he's calling him Master Harold now. I saw it coming. I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. You've just hurt yourself bad. And you're a coward, Master Harold. The face you should be spitting in is your father's. But you use mine because you think you're safe inside your fair skin. And this time... I don't mean just or decent. The other thing Willie does that I think is important is Willie says that Hallie has long trousers on now, but Willie's a boy. He's not a man. That just wasn't a thing that a man could or would do. Sam starts to wash it off but and wipe it off, but he says, it's not just that you've made me feel dirtier than I've ever been in my life. I mean, how do I wash off yours and your father's filth? He's being brutally honest about what racism has done to these men. I've also failed. A long time ago, I promised myself I was going to try and do something but you've just shown me, Master Harold, that I failed. And we start to learn that what he was trying to do was help Hallie. He remembers when Hallie came into his room and needed help carrying his father home from the Central Hotel. And he tells the story of carrying Hallie's drunk father home for Hallie. 
it's so important that you understand how much Hallie is motivated by his shame. It's filled him with anger and rage. He does say, I love him, Sam. Um, Sam even says, I know that you do. That's why I tried to stop you from saying these things about him. It would have been so simple if you could have just despised him for being a weak man. But he's your father. You love him. And you're ashamed of him. You're ashamed so much. And and now that's going to include yourself. Um, but we also start to see that Sam is the best teacher he's got. He says, the one person who should have been teaching you what that means was the cause of your shame. If you really want to know, that's why I made you that kite. So we start to realize that Sam made the kite so that Hallie could look up again and not suffer from the shame of his father. The other thing he reminds him of is that, or teaches him, is that when they had that kite together, it was on a whites only bench. And that's why Sam couldn't stay. That's important because at the very end of the play, Sam is inviting Hallie to get off of that bench in, in, in a symbolic way. You can learn from this. You can be a better person. You don't have to suffer because of this the whole time, the rest of your life. At the end of the play, I'm not sure if Hallie's going to suffer for the rest of his life or not. It's ambiguous, except for the fact that he is a Tolfu guard. Willie sees all of this, and at the top of page 59, he says, It's bad. It's all bad in here now. But the play becomes about forgiveness. See, Sam is clearly a father figure for Hallie. And like a good father, like, I mean, think about it. There's almost nothing that you could do where your parents wouldn't love you anymore or wouldn't forgive you. Sam is like that. He's teaching Hallie about forgiveness. Sam says this, stop Hallie. Hallie, I've got no right to tell you what being a man means if I don't behave like one myself. And I'm not doing so well at, the, at it this afternoon. Should we try again? That gives Hallie the opportunity to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Um, but I want you to see that no matter how, who or what or how hell he is, Sam really is um, the good parent. Hallie says he just doesn't know anything anymore. And Sam says on page, the bottom of 59, are you sure of that, Hallie? Because it would be pretty hopeless if that was true. It would mean nothing was been learnt in here this afternoon, and there was a hell of a lot of teaching going on, one way or the other. The question you should ask yourself about the end of the play is, did Hallie learn something? He says, I don't believe you. I reckon there's one, I'm on the last page of the play, thing you know. You don't have to sit up there by yourself. You know that, that what that bench means now. And you can leave it any time you choose. All you've got to do is stand up and walk away from it. As we read the play, we realize that that line has a greater meaning. It's um, It makes Hallie um, symbolic of South African people at that place and at that time. It's this world of apartheid that he's inviting him to walk away from. Because my contention is that the racism is harmful to Hallie as well. Hallie leaves in silence. But Willie, I notice, comes up and says, it's okay, Brother Sam. You see, is, is going to be okay tomorrow. And then he says, Brother Sam, you're right. I think about it. And you're right. Tonight I find Hilda, and I'll say I'm sorry. And make a promise. I won't beat her no more. You hear me, Brother Sam? In other words... The one person who's clearly learned the lesson that 
Hallie was supposed to learn is Willie, who sort of started the play as, I mean, he's the closest thing we have to a minor character. Willie, just, Willie, I hear you, Willie. And Willie sort of like decides, I would rather hear one more song and walk home. And they play one more song. But you should notice that the song is sort of a father singing to a little boy, a little boy who's crying, a little boy who's blue. Um, somebody took your kitty car away, a little boy who's crying over nothing. A uh, little man, you've had a busy day. Um, and the little boy's had little problems, like he's lost his marbles. Yeah. But don't worry, daddy will get you new ones. Um, but it's this, it's this song about this more idealized or romanticized relationship between fathers and sons. I do love this play. I think it's really beautiful. And I think it has something to teach us about. And I also really want you to think about how, what this play teaches us or can, how this play connects to the other plays that we've read. I've been thinking a lot about Hallie's pride and how that has sort of like caused his suffering. But his, Hallie's Hamartia is more than that. His greater Hamartia is the racism and the, the institutionalized racism that sort of defined his character and created his greatest character flaw.